everyone, this is Marie Blue Angel here, and I am back with Under the False Sky, Blood Covered Snow. Um, I'm very excited to get back into the next part, and um, hopefully I will be able to complete the story um, in its entirety with the second part. Um, so hopefully we're going to see what exactly is going to happen, because we've already seen some of these characters, how the story's already building up, some of the connections between the characters, and I am very just in, I've been very much in suspense about what will happen next. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Okay, so last time I had stopped at a part where Mari, Oran, and Esta are, are all going into the forest where, um, Esther's, Esther had spotted some, what do you call that? Like some, some military um, people or some like trail evidence of this is the military. I think some footprints or something. And so the three of them are going to investigate exactly what is happening. And I'm scared, but here we are. Um, so anyways, let's just get into it. Like I said, the ever darkening landscape quickly passed by the windows of Mari's mech. Aran was right beside her as they followed Esther, who was gracefully navigate who gracefully navigated the group through the dense forest. While she knew that her attention should be solely on the mission, her thoughts often wandered. I hope Mike mm, Mika? I think it's Mika. I always want to say Micah because I know someone named Micah, but I think it's Mika. I hope Mika is behaving. I hope everything turns out well. Yes. Yes. Everything will be fine. Hey! Hey, boss! Boss, come on! Pay attention! We can't have our leaders spacing out on us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry. We're entering range. Just a few hundred meters to go. Okay. We're going. We're almost there. With each passing moment, Mari's hands grew sweatier, causing her to tighten her grip on the controls of her mech. After a few more cautious pa paces, they were greeted by the wide berth of an expansive meadow. Ooh, okay, I like how that changes. The clearing was veiled by a colossal shadow cast from a nearby hill that encircled them. And here we are. Okay. At the foot of the hill, the young woman came to a halt and pointed with the front legs at what looked like a carving from the distance. It was impossible for Mari to recognize anything from her current position. She carefully stepped closer. With the headlights pointed at the indentation, her mech conjured a holographic image of the zoomed-in area displayed on the windshield. To her luck, the frost had practically etched the marking into the ground, making it easier for her to investigate. Huh. As the foreboding realization sank in, a lump formed in her throat, making it difficult for her to breathe. Uh, they... are... Choking on her words, she didn't want to... No, she couldn't say it. She knew best, after all. They were the same. The same tracks left behind on the day she found her fiancé's mech. How could she ever forget them? That day had engraved itself into her memory, just like the tracks on the ground right in front of her. They're here. <gasps> They're here. They are here. Oh my god, I'm scared. Okay. Are you for real? Yeah, for real. From now on, move cautiously. Don't make even the slightest noise. Avoid all attention to yourself unless absolutely necessary. Do I make myself clear? Yes, ma'am. Um, also, how do you do that, like, in a mech? Like, I mean, yes, you are highly trained and have experience with a mech and going, like, boop, 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 going with a mech, like, the, the boop, those were sound effects of obviously walking in a mech. Totally realistic, I know. But it, it crunches. You're, like, it's metal. You can't, like, float. And even if you could, I would assume that would, like, cause, like, air to, like, or like fire or some sort of like mechanic would have to, you know, me mechanic would have to work and then a sound would happen. Anyways, still yes ma'am. I just, I'm curious how that happens. Roger, Roger boss. boss. Roger boss. 
She attentively closed her eyes for a moment, pulling in the warm air of her heated neck. With each exhale, her trembling body calmed down a little. Eventually, she forced her eyes open, her gaze, li her gaze limp and expressionless as a defiance, as a defiance to her growing fear. I can't show any weakness. Not now. Not when the lives of my colony, my family, and especially of Micah, Mika, are at stake. Her sight scanned away from the mark and to the top of the large hill. The dazzling full moon stood above them, enveloping everything in its bright light. Did you also investigate the hill during your expedition? The hill? No, it wasn't assigned to us. To be honest, the zone ended right here. Hmm. So we don't know about the hill. Follow me. Okay, we're gonna go find out about the hill. Boss, what are you planning? I have a hunch. Okay, let's go with our hunches. In lieu of elaborating any further, Mari backed up backed up the mech and angled the mechanical legs toward the ground, looking through the windshield to the top. <sighs> Surely she doesn't want to. Without her comrade being able to finish his sentence, Mari let go of one of the lock control sticks, causing the mech to shoot upwards like a tense spring when released. Oh, it can jump that far of a distance? That's pretty cool. Yes, she does! <laughs> That's our boss! Woohoo! Mari's very badass. We love to see it. Didn't she just tell us not to make any noise and to keep quiet? Aran has a great point here. But, you know, if we do it stealthily or, you know, whatever, it should be fine. With the tips of the mech's legs, she clawed onto the rock face. She paused for a moment to make sure she was in a secure position. After checking the status of her mech and its standing, she slowly began to move. Pulling herself up the steep incline, her body pressed deeper into the soft leather of her seat. Are you guys waiting for an invitation? We've got no time to spare! Mm-hmm. It only took a few seconds for her to reach the top. Looking down from above, the distance to the ground looked even greater than before. Once she had made sure the others had followed her, she turned to the area stretching across the hill. I fucking knew it. <gasps> They're here. Her eyes reconfirmed her suspicions. The military camp she had silently pleaded to not exist lay manifest before her. Strangely, the camp lay vacant. The tent's lights were turned off. It almost looked deserted. Where are they? I... I can't believe it. They really are here. I guess the brat was right for once. I've been telling you this whole time. Why don't you ever believe what I have to say? Yeah, why do you ever believe her? I don't understand. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> this dynamic between those two is very interesting to me. Esther let out a dejected sigh. A, s a sentiment mi mimicked by her mech draping forward slightly. Ignoring her theatrics, Aran rolled his eyes. Upon... Re upon Regaining her composure, Esther's eyes darted rapidly from side to side. But why is nobody here? Surely they'd have heard all the noise we were just making. Are they gonna, like, ambush you? Or what do you think, boss? Or maybe they went towards the colony? It really is strange. It looks like they had left camp abruptly, as if Himeras had been nearby. But that can't be it. After all, we clear the region regularly. Should I hop out and take a quick look? Hmm. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea. Yes. <gasps> okay, what are we- <laughs> I'm scared. Without a moment of hesitation, the hatch of Esther's mech flew open, exuding a huff of steam, followed by a motorized whir. Out of the corner of her eye, she could make out her comrade's shadow swiftly slipping out and scanning all directions, with rifle in hand. Arriving at one of the tents, she meticulously lifted the curtain and dashed past the drapes after confirming no one was inside. Empty. How strange. The beds are all made properly, even though the rest of the place looks like a complete pigsty. Oh no. Esther, return to your mech. Now! What? Why? Do what I tell you and... <gasps> Esther! 
Her pleading words were shattered by a deafening shrill, a sound so menacing that it shook Mari to her core and made her blood run ice cold. The silhouette of her comrade slumped to the ground like a doll whose strings had been cut. It lay dormant, motionless, and devoid of life. Hey, Brad, that's not funny. Hey, answer me! I don't think she's playing. Silence. Nothing but silence. It was even more crushing than the sound that caused Esther to fall over. Hey. The headlight of Aaron's mech directed its focus to the twisted shape splayed on the ground, her body. They were met with the vacant, piercing stare of her wide brown eyes. Disfigured, her head was contorted in their direction, while her body pointed in a completely different one. A burning sensation pushed its way through Mari's throat. Unable to properly process what she was seeing, she looked away. Her heart didn't know whether to tighten or to tear itself apart. This was clearly a trap, and they had walked right into it. She had allowed Esther to walk in right into the prime jaws of the enemy. It was her fault. Where are they? Where are they hiding? I mean, okay, this is why I kind of stopped the my like playthrough for part one, where I did for part one, because I was like, mm, maybe something's going to happen when we do these investigations. I'm so sorry, Esther, though. I can't believe you're gone. Where are they hiding? She refrained from moving a single muscle. She knew that a single wrong move would be fatal to them both. And what Mari could only understand as an explosion, sudden explosion of anger and panic, Aran's mech started to strut forward. Pointing its machine gun at the camp, he showered the camp in a hail of bullets. You absolute- <gasps> With a violent jolt, Mari was ca catapulted several meters aside. If not for being strapped in so tightly while clutching the armed breast of her seat, the impact would have effortlessly thrown her headfirst out of the windshield. Ooh. Rubbing her shoulders, she tried to reposition herself and regain her composure. Where? As a veil of obscurity suddenly dispersed, Mari discerned numerous beams of light pointly, pointing squarely at them. There was no denying it. They were indisputably surrounded. In an instant, seven red dots started to blink on the radar at the exact same positions from which the light beams or originated. How could this be? Why are they only now popping up? This is crazy! It is very crazy. How'd they hide? How did they hide? Without exchanging any words, she her maneuvered herself to Iran. Back against back, she threw in a final breath. She had no option but to fight back. If she didn't survive, then there was no chance that the colony would either. Mika. Small Polaroid picture taped at the front, top front. I saw the Polaroid picture. It's been over here. I was like, who, what is this? A small Polaroid picture taped to the top left corner of the screen caught her eye. It was four-year-old Mika sitting somewhat awkwardly on her lap and staring at the big camera with a big smile. With newfound resolve, she positioned her mech's gun in the direction the light beams were coming from. With an unnatural awareness of her movements, they immediately began to shift, moving towards her at an un abnormal speed. What? Instinctively, she began to shoot, but bullets bounced off the models with a series of anticlimactic, anticlimactic, anticlimactic. <laughs> anticlimactic pings. No matter how many bullets she shot, none of them hit the mark. This can't. How? Aron, fall back. That is an order. Boss, they killed her. How can you expect me to just leave? They killed her right in front of me. That brat. She wasn't supposed to die like this. R.I.P. Esther. Ugh. These bastards! They have to pay! They have to pay! I mean, true, but... 
seems like they got you surrounded. A run! No! She could only observe in horror as Aran charged recklessly toward two of the enemy, enemy mechs. He sprayed, sprayed a surge of bullets with pristine accuracy, each round filled with unrelenting rage. But it wasn't enough to penetrate their armor. It was hopeless. It was futile. All she could do was watch. With a single blow, his signal vanished. His mech erupted into a blazing, all-consuming red in front of her. This can't be! Oh damn, he died too. R.I.P. Iran. Frozen still by the shock of the situation, she didn't notice the enemy to the right, stampeding straight towards her. She narrowly evaded the frontal attack. If she were even a millisecond later, she would have perished. Behind the window opposite to her, she was able to make out the figure of a young man. His murderous, spiteful smile covered her body in goosebumps, making it difficult to dodge the relentless onslaught. It's a real shame that your comrades got such a quick and painless death. It's just no fun unless I hear whimpering and begging for mercy. Can you at least give me a better show? Girl, not Nahum over here. I mean, under <laughs> okay, I go. I. People check out the next the next installment, the next visual novel in this universe for the Nana Reno game jam. Cause things will become clearer. <laughs> but my god, like, oh, like all this drama. Wow. This is so crazy that I'm seeing this, like, like knowing what I know, seeing how all this is coming together. I don't know how I'm supposed to feel. So anyways, let's continue. <laughs> Mari, the Deathbringer of the Rebellion, struggles in her performance. Pitiful. Where's the heartless wrench that wiped out an entire arc with countless families? Ooh. That wasn't us! We didn't attack any civilians! Quit the bullshit! I saw you with my own two eyes! You ripped my twin sister away from me without a second thought! Mm-hmm. This can't be. You're... A surge of memories abruptly flooded her mind. She vaguely recounted the driver of an enemy mech, standing protectively in front of her twin brother to take the fatal blow, trading her life for his. The natural landscape drawn by war painted indiscriminately with streaks of blood. Yes, that's right! I am your downfall. I will make sure to destroy everything you hold dear. Your friends, your family, the love of your life. Anyone you hold dear will feel my wrath. <sighs> mm -hmm. I will say, this does remind me of like general theme of like... When does revenge end? When does like an action, an action has consequences, and then because of those consequences, it's that sparks someone else to take action, and those actions have consequences, and the cycle repeats, so on and so forth. When does it end? I don't know, but um, this is what that is reminding me of. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> How is this going to end? Although I think I know the answer. Her adversary lunged forward in the second attempt to strike. As Mari desperately tried to back away, the unanticipated came to fruition. In all the shock and commotion, she hadn't realized how much she had been pushed to the edge of the cliff. Her mech's leg frames were too heavy to just in time, slipping and causing her to tumble. She tried to cling to the stony ground with her front legs. She had not taken her component opponent into consideration. Reveling in her helplessness, he offered a taunting push, severing away what little grip she had left. No! Girl, you're falling! Oh my gosh. Ooh, that did not sound great. Okay. Our windshield was broken. That Polaroid picture is still hanging on, I see. My goodness. Mari's, uh, you know, not looking great. Got some cuts of, along her head. That's not great. I 
feel like Mr. Man's gonna come over here and follow us to make sure that um, Mari's not alive anymore. So let's see. Laden with heavy eyelids, she struggled to keep her eyes open. Her field of vision had completely blurred, and her body felt unnervingly light, devoid of any pain. It was at this moment that she knew she was dying. Warm blood began to pool in her lungs. Hybrid or not, she couldn't survive a wound like that. How could all of this happen? These mech models. And why didn't they... The realization hit her like a brick. The radar, the blinding speed, the bullet ricochet. Everything made sense to her now. In retaliation, they must have upgraded and advanced their weaponry. Hmm. It was all because of the events that had transpired a month ago. It was because of that mission and the biggest sin she had committed. Oh, okay. I thought... Okay. I understand now. I thought this was, like, this story versus this other story that's about to be released. I thought there was a bigger time difference. But I guess not. That's, I mean, that's that makes a lot more sense then with all the things that are happening. Because um, I really thought there was like a longer period of time between the stories. But if it was only a month ago, then that makes a little more sense. Okay. It is all my fault. The windows had completely shattered due to the fall, letting in the cold air of the winter night. The fleeting sensation of the chilly night began to dull, and her every breath became increasingly more difficult to take. As if she was being ridiculed for her transgressions, the Polaroid picture still clung to what was left of the windshield. Her eyes inevitably began to burn as, she, as searing tears began to roll down her face, but even the sensation of warmth began to whittle away. What a failure she was. At the end of it all, what had she truly achieved? What was the point of her existence if she couldn't even protect her own child, keeping him safe from the calamities of this world? Her vision, stained with the blurry red, could faintly make out an approaching silhouette. Was it the boy who had pushed her down? What would he do to her? He probably couldn't get much pleasure out of the state she was in anyway. To her surprise, it was someone else. His uniform was that of the enemy. Here, to finish the job, huh? Without replying, he stepped closer to her, clutching a handgun tightly in his right hand. Mari couldn't decipher if it were, were pity shame or sadness strewn across the man's face. He stopped directly in front of her. With unrelenting eye contact, he raised his shooting arm. I have a son and daughter. They're barely twelve and eight. Please, spare them. They have nothing to do with this conflict. She knew it was a gamble that her words might fall on deaf ears, but it was all she could do. She knew that her words were hypocritical, the demon that her enemy had seen her for, begging for mercy in her last breath, but it was all she could do. Mika. <sighs> Mari's gone, everyone. Ah! I hate that I knew that was going to happen, and I still was like, yeah, it's not going to happen. I was in denial. I was in denial. And look, look, as, look at what that's, where that's got me. <sighs> Whatever. Gabrielle's here again. Hello. You don't know what's happening. Things are about to happen, my dude. Emerging from the factory's doors, he slipped into solace in the quiet, chilly night. A brief respite from the chaos of Mika's adolescence and the weight of today's events. 
The vacant yard, lit up with the gentle glow of distant stars, welcomed him into its muted serenity. The rhythmic, rhythmic, rhyth, rhythmic monotone hum of the machinery behind him was a welcome annoyance in the wake of the verbal rattling he had grown accustomed to. Why can't things just be easy for once? I don't know, my dude. He knew why Mika was behaving this way around him. Given his age and the circumstances, he probably would have acted the same way. And yet... Nevertheless, he wanted to prove to the boy how mistaken he was in his resentment. He had no desire to impede on his biological father's place. Still, Gabriel wanted to be there for him. <sighs> Letting out a sigh, he rubbed his temples and began to walk across the yard towards the warehouse. Due to today's events, he still hadn't been able to properly attend to Mari's initial request. She had asked him to prepare the mech that meant so much to the boy and her as a New Year's present for Mika. He would soon be 13 years old, which meant that he'd finally be taught how to pilot a mech. Mari. Had it not been for Mari's kindness, Ada might not be alive today. If she hadn't taken the initiative that day to give them shelter, his daughter would have succumbed to the, her body's weak condition. He was certain that if his most precious treasure had been taken from him, he would have followed after her. Without realizing it, he had stepped closer to the gate that led out of their home and towards the forest. Despite the brilliant full moon, immersing everything in its soothing light, it had already become so dark that he could only vaguely discern the outlines of the treetops along the horizon. This is a really pretty sky, by the way. Um, I, like, love it so much. Like, I like looking at this background. And this sky. And I like that there's a full moon. <sighs> but, you know. It's not as calm as everyone thinks it is. Gabrielle's just like, yeah, I'm doing stuff. I was like, my dude, you have bigger worries than figuring out if your, your, your stepson or whatever likes you <laughs> but he doesn't know that <sighs> i guess he's about to know so we'll see what happens how long is it going to take her it's been over three hours already ah oh no as if his mind had imagined them in panic three pairs of headlights flashed in the distance with the weight being lifted off the young man's heart his grip on his bag's leather strapped ease wait something is off these headlights. Okay, you're smart, you're observant. Okay, notice that something is wrong. The realization struck him with the intensity of a thousand sharp stabs, compelling him to stagger backwards. These were not the same headlights as the ones seen on their models. The mech's headlights were too bright for that, even if only barely noticeable. Carried by his trembling legs, he hurried to one of the control to the control towers posted on both sides of the entrance. Oh my gosh, this like movement up and down to like, you know, mimic him running. I was like, I can't read, even though the text is not moving. <laughs> it's good, I like this immersion. Um, tripping up the narrow spiral staircase, he opened the hatch and pulled himself up into the control room. Go, Gabrielle, go. He was greeted by a nonchalant young member of the rebellion. The guard was leaning back in his chair, biting into a small loaf of bread. His legs were casually propped up on the control desk, unaware of the incoming storm. Oh, hi Gabe. Look, the boss and the others are coming back. That's not Mari. Activate the sirens. Now! What are you talking about? Listen! Aren't these their signals? Look. Gabrielle's eyes widened in shock as three blue dots began blinking on the radar screen. They were signals coming from their mechs model, mech models, no doubt. As someone who was familiar with the mechanics and architecture of a wide variety of mech models, he knew this could only mean one thing. Mari. She was. No. No, no, no. I'm so sorry, Gabriel. I'm so sorry, my dude. This can't be. It is. I'm so sorry. What's wrong, Gabrielle? Did Mika's pestering get to you that much? The alarm. Huh? Turn on the alarm. Right now! Okay. <sighs> Bricks. Mika? Oh my goodness. These children! I'm worried for these children now. My goodness. I'm worried for everyone, but like I'm particularly worried about these children. Like a lullaby, little Ada's soft, calming breath filled the room, illuminated only by the faint light given off by Mika's bedside lamp. 
With Ada, while Ada had drifted peacefully into slumber, Mika laid in his bed, his arms tucked be behind his head and his gaze fixed on the low ceiling of their tiny room. He wasn't even sure if this could be called a room. It was just an old training compartment that his mother had converted into a bedroom for the two children. He couldn't shake a thought that plagued his mind. No matter how much Gabrielle had tried to downplay the situation, Mika knew his mother wouldn't just go on a trip. Hmm. Lethargically, he pulled his upper body up and let his legs dangle over the edge of his so-called bed. Marked by today's curiosities, his body felt heavy and tired. <laughs> he veered his eyes over to Ada, who gave a discontented grunt, seemingly at the sound of his movements. She rolled onto her side, her face, her back facing him. For a few seconds, he remained uncomfortably still, afraid that the slightest muscle contraction could wake the little girl from her slumber. <sighs> However, he was soon released from this stasis by the calm breaths emanating from her once again. How can she sleep so peacefully? As he was about to lie back down, he noticed something flashing on the ground from the corner of his eye. An old and rather tattered, tattered, tattered leather journal the edges of which had definitely seen better days. It wasn't hard for Mika to figure out who owned this little book. He kept seeing the idiot ga idiotic Gabrielle carrying it around him, jotting down notes. It must have fallen out of his bag when he had put the two children to bed just a few minutes ago. Mika's curiosity got the better of him. Finally, he had a chance to look at its contents. Gabrielle guarded it as if his life depended on it, never allowing so much as a glimpse inside. He must have collected a wealth of information about the colony in its pages. This was his opportunity. He could finally expose him and reveal his true colors. With shaky hands, he slowly leaned over the edge of the bed, stretching his arm with all his might. His fingertips reached for the ribbon of the notebook. Got you! Carefully, he pulled it up by the strap and sat back up. His gaze remained locked on Ada. Thankfully, she was still sound asleep. Let's see... Oh, I get to read these? Yay! Okay, great. February 10th. Ada finally has enough strength to walk again. I'm relieved, but I can't get rid of this overwhelming sense of fear. The fear that as soon as her small, fragile hand lets go of mine, she will be blown away by the spring breeze like the seeds of a dandelion. Oh, how I wish I could give her my heart and strength, or even my life, if it means she can grow up healthily, healthy and without pain. I would greatly bear any pain and torment. Though, I should be thankful she's still here with me. After all, it's my fault that, it, that it's come to this, and I don't know how to repay Mari and her colony for this precious miracle. It's been two months now, and when I'm not nursing Ada, I try to help with the machines and share my knowledge. But is that enough? All of them, especially Mari, have done so much for me. A perfect stranger. How can I ever pay, make up for this debt? Granted, Mari tells me she's happy to do this and wants nothing but support in return. Yet. May 23rd. I wish Ada and Mika would get along better. Every time Ada makes an approach, he rejects it and makes one of his silly comments, resulting in Ada throwing a fit. I understand that he is suspicious of us, after all, we are still strangers to him, but they are the only children here. Mustn't he feel lonely, too? How can I prove to him that we mean him and his home no harm? How can I show him that he doesn't need to be afraid of us? It's frustrating, because I know that no matter what I do, I will probably never gain his trust. June 3rd. Today was the first day I accompanied Mari on the expedition. Although I can pilot a mech to some extent, my skill level isn't nearly good enough for combat. So I sat beside her in a mech. It was strange. <laughs> I love- I lo sorry, I lo sorry, Gabrielle, I don't know what's happening, you know, with the woo-woo, the alarms and everything, or what's about to happen, but I love reading your notes. This is great. I don't know exactly what was wrong with me. I was often hot and then suddenly cold. My hands were sweaty, and my chest felt heavy. 
Maybe I had eaten something wrong? Hmm. But my eyes kept wandering to her, how she was always grinning and driving the mech so confidently. No. Could you call even call that confident? Maybe crazy. No, maniac. Maniac. Manic is a better term. I was like, that's not the right word. <laughs> and maybe the strange feeling could have been the fear of her risky maneuver sending us flying straight into the nearest tree or mountain, killing us both. Ah, yes, of course. Yes, that must be it. There is no other option. What a Don't lie to yourself, my dude. Oh, my. Oh, my. It's only been like two months since the last entry. August 18th. I have fallen in love. Head over heels in love. I know I shouldn't have those feelings. After all, she is my savior, and yet... Yet I can't take my eyes off her. Her beautiful, vibrant eyes. The way she treats the, col the people of the colony. Her son. The way she selflessly, sh self selflessly guides the colony. She takes my breath away. Like the pleasant Chris Christmas... Ugh. She takes my breath away, like the pleasant crispness of a spring morning that breathes new life into my lungs, dazzling like the sun rising high on the horizon, once again enveloping the world in its hope-giving light. Wow, those are nice words, Gabrielle. I like that. Okay. The last time I had felt like this was when Hannah was alive. Hannah. It's been eight years now since she had succumbed to her weak body, leaving me and our newborn Ada behind on this godforsaken earth. I've never thought I might witness the day I might feel like this again. It's strange. I should feel guilty, but I don't. The more I think about it, the more my feelings to Hannah feel like a distant memory. Okay, okay, so we're fi we're figuring- you're figuring out your feelings, that's okay. It's okay to fall in love, that's fine, it's been a long time. Okay, October 30th. They have finally returned. They all seem to be in a festive move, mood, having successfully destroyed the Ark and satisfied some of their burning desire for revenge. One person, however, who didn't feel like celebrating was Mari. Oh... Okay, so, okay, this ties in with some other stuffs. As always, she had put on her I'm the, I'm the tough leader and have to suck up my true emotions face and smiled at the group before saying her goodbyes and withdrawing from the party. I knew something was wrong, so I followed her. Once again, my gut feeling wasn't wrong. Curled up and drowning bitterly in her tears, I found her in her room. Seeing her in this state sent a sharp pain through my chest, and I found it difficult to breathe. I had to do something. Dry her tears. Take away her worries. But, as so often, I was frozen in place, motionless. In the end, it was her, again, who sought the needed comfort and supported my arms. Apparently, something had gone awry during the mission. Even though the goal was achieved in the end, there were more casualties than originally planned. I have their blood on my hands. It's my fault. She kept repeating that over and over, like a mantra. What should I, what should I have answered? Should I have been honest and agreed with her? Or lie and lull her into a false sense of innocence? Was staying silent the right thing to do? I'm pathetic, right? Mm, I mean, it's a hard... I don't know. Like, it's true. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's true that a lot of things happen. So, should you have been honest? I mean, silence is providing an answer. That is a sort of honesty. It, I'm not sort of. It is honesty in its own way. But I don't think you're pathetic. No more. Okay, I clicked it twice just to make sure. Hmm. <sighs> Okay, so that was very informative. It also gives paints a clearer picture of what was happening with Gabrielle and, and Mari. And now the sirens are going and I'm doing my commentary, so um, hold on. <laughs> Mika was about to close the book and set it aside when the deafening sound shook the room. 
causing the dim bedside bedside light to flicker. What the? Ada, wake up! Hurry! Vika frantically yanked himself out of his bed and vigorously shook Ada's shoulders. Each passing second the sirens reached his ears, it felt like his soul was slowly being sucked out of his body. As if he were a mere observer. What's the matter? Why are the sirens on? Is this the practice alarm? Don't be stupid. There's no way that it would be a practice alarm in the middle of the night. Come on! Without a second thought, he threw the cardigan and scarf to her before slipping into his shoes. As he was about to turn to Ada, the book lying on his bed came into focus. In his scrambled mind, he took it and put it in his jacket pocket. What? What about Dad? Where is he? How should I know? We have to get out of here. If you don't hurry up, I'll leave you behind. But you're still taking her with you. Okay, sir. Okay, little Mika. It's okay. You're, it's a tough love situation here. They're so cute. No, I'll hurry. I promise. Please don't leave me. She's not going to leave you, but it's fine. I, I feel that. She frantically threw on her clothes and reached out to grab Mika's hand. Her whole body trembled with fear. She clutched, she clutched Samika's hand as if it were a lifeline. A delicate, elusive threat that assa ass assaged her fears. Come. Now. For the last time, he looked into the cramped train compartment which he had called his own territory, his sanctuary, for so long, despite the fact that he had, he had to unwillingly share it. A heavy lump formed in his throat as he tried to suppress the ominous thoughts that were forcing its way to the surface. The siren's harrowing cries would only sound for one reason. And he knew why. In the corridor, corridor, they were almost trampled by a stampede of panicked colony residents who scurried in all directions. Their frightened screams and shrieks were swallowed up by the loud sirens. Uh, hey! What's going on here? He managed to grab one of them by the sleeve and pull him back. You two have to get out of here! Quickly! The military just stormed the place! The, the military? military? Okay, so like some adults be helping these children like what's our what's our what's our evacuation plan what was the protocol i would assume that since these two are the only children that they were like yeah so just in case like you know they're like guardians or parents are not around like should it shouldn't there be a how many people live in this colony how many adults they should know but anyways they're just gonna leave these children i don't know let's see Mika could feel Ada's grip tighten and her palm become sweatier. Her small fingernails dug painfully into the back of his hand. Even though he hated to admit it, he felt no different. The pain that threatened his heart to burst deprived him of the strength to breathe. They were here. These bastards were really here. He had to fight. He had to- Take the rear exit. It should be safer than leaving through the front. <sighs> Try to hide from them as best you can, okay? Okay, thank you, Mr. Adult over here. I was just like, which adult's gonna tell them what to do because they're children. I'm not saying that they don't know how to do things, but like they're obviously very panicked and scared. They're 12 and eight years old. I'm worried for them. What is going to happen? Great, take the rear exit. Let's do that. No, I'll help. Mika. Mika, no. Don't be stupid. You're a kid. What makes you think you'd stand a chance against machines? What about mom? Are, are they back from the expedition? And where's dad? Uh. We'll do everything we can to stop these monsters, but you must run now. Do you understand? God, I'm scared for these children. Mika, I'm scared. Shh. Just be quiet. They had managed to get out of the factory building unscathed. As the man had said, the rear part of the site was still empty. Neither rebel nor any of the military rats were to be seen. What now? Where should the two of them go? The only way to get off the factory grounds was the entrance, which would mean they'd have to run through the middle of the uncom oncoming battlefield. If they were to hide here, it would only be a matter of time before they'd be found. If only he could pilot a mech, then the two of them could get out of here. I have an idea. I don't like that look on your face. <laughs> Why in all this panic? I'm laughing. She's like, mm -mm, 
Mika, no. Is this a good idea? Maybe it is. Maybe this is your chance to go 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 into your dad's mech and go get out of there. I'm not sure though, but whatever. We have no other choice. Come on, now. Ah! The warehouse was on the direct path of the entrance. Once they made it there, they'd also make it out of the camp. Just a little bit more, then. As Mika was about to turn the corner and head for the warehouse gate, he abruptly came to a halt. Rapidly, he pulled Ada back. Clutching her to his body, he pinned his back against the wall, leaning forward cautiously. He tried to make out the scenario playing just a few feet from them. At the, frac at the fraction of a second, he spotted three individuals emerging from their mechs, weapons drawn. Illuminated by the flames of the burning observation towers at the entrance, he was able to make out a young, graceful woman, a similarly young, laid-back man, and... <gasps> A person very familiar to him. I kind of forgot about you. I feel like you did the thing, like, for Mari. That also looks like your silhouette. Like, it looks like your silhouette with your, like, little collar and stuff here. So, we'll see. This. This can't be. Mika! This man was with those bastards? He was one of them. If he hadn't met him, if he hadn't helped him. Would any of this have happened? Was all of this his fault? I mean, I don't think it's your fault. You didn't know anything. Man, watching these worms squirm for their lives is so much fun. Commander, why'd you go and be a total killjoy by blowing that bitch's head away? Oh my god. I could have had a really good time with her. Be quiet, you fool. So pathetic that the infamous Mari was such a pushover when shit hit the fan. Executing her was child's play. <laughs> Mom? Hearing her name pierced his chest like the claws of a savage beast after his own little heart. She is... dead. I have to kill them. They must die, or else they'll... Mika! As though her voice brought him back to his senses, their eyes met. Her sad, crimson eyes locked with his, and her hand moved up to his cheek, gently wiping away one of the tears in a futile attempt to stop the flood that now streamed from his face. Oh. Was he crying? I have to admit, Yona, the idea of taking their trackers and placing them in our mechs was brilliant! These idiots didn't suspect a thing! I will say that is a brilliant move. I'm not on anyone's side here in terms of, you know, whatever. <sighs> I feel sad, though. <laughs> I don't know. When when a lot of our character we're morally great. It's fine. We're morally great characters. Uh, but I'm allowed to feel things for morally great characters. They are also human. I'm sad. But when does the revenge stop? When does the action stop? When do the consequences of our actions and then more actions and consequences and actions and consequences stop. I don't know. <sighs> Commander, I'm going to check inside for any survivors. If you'll excuse me. Girl, I love it. She's just like, bye. I'll have a look around too. Don't do anything reckless, Nahum. <laughs> Sir, please, don't baby me. This was their chance. Only one of them was in sight. They had to sneak past him somehow to get to the warehouse. As though it was God himself who had heard Mika's plea, a metallic sound echoed from the direction opposite to them. Who's there? Now! Without warning, Mika instinctually grabbed Ada's hand and dragged her with him, as fast as his shaky legs could carry him. He ran towards the hall entrance. Uncertain as to whether the man had noticed the two or not, Mika looked around the dimly lit area with frenetic desperation. I have to be quick. His vision locked steadily onto a mech in the far back corner. He knew it wasn't time yet, but he was left with no other choice. Once they finished sprinting toward the mech, Mika let go of Ada and pulled himself up to the cockpit, determination flashing in his eyes. Mika, what are you doing? I'm getting us the hell out of here. This is dangerous! Do you even know how to pilot that? With a hiss, the hatch leading to the cockpit popped open and he climbed in, quickly scanning its interior. 
Even if it was a different model, the layout surely had to be similar. And Ron has shown me how to operate his mech a few times. In secret, of course. That's not really reassuring! It a short scream made him freeze. Were they here? Had they noticed them after all? Expecting the worst, he slowly looked, turned around, and looked directly into Gabrielle's eyes. What on God's green earth are you thinking of doing? I don't know. I thought he had a. Honestly, I think Mika has a pretty good plan. Like, cause what else are they supposed to do? Gabrielle, what happened? You're beat up, my dude. Let go of me! I have to get us out of here. Do you want to die? Y you have no idea how to control these things. Besides, this one is still under maintenance. Okay, well, Gabrielle, are you going to pilot a mech with three of us? That's what I- I mean, fine, whatever. Given what he, Mika knew, like, that was a pretty good plan. What else were you supposed to do? So what? So what? At the entrance are a bunch of bloodthirsty soldiers, eager to kill you. What do you know? You just let my mom die and lie to us! Why didn't you protect her? Why could it happen to you? She's dead! Oh, Mika, my dude, I'm so sorry that Mari is gone. Like, that's... <sighs> but this is not helping. Blinded by his rage, Mika failed to notice the countless wounds that littered Gabrielle's body. Blood streamed from his forehead and mouth, and his right arm hung limp at his side. You... You're hurt? <sighs> that doesn't matter now. With what little strength he could muster, he grabbed Mika by his hood and pulled him out of the cockpit and down to Ada, who'd been silently watching the two of them argue. Dad. Trying to ignore the pain as not to worry her, he knelt down to his daughter. Her eyes were welled with a growing desp despair. A sorrowful smile graced his lips as he gently brushed the strands of hair which had fallen into her face behind her ear. Ada, my beautiful daughter, you have to be strong now, okay? His expression darkened. Without paying any heed to the protest of the children, he grabbed them and pulled them into the center of the hall. Let go! He swung open a trap door. Without closer inspection, it looked like the rest of the floor panels. In the darkness, Mika managed to make out a small cavity beneath the opening, and it dawned on him. Gabrielle, wait! There is no time to wait. No! This is not a secret tunnel. This is a hiding spot. A serious deep glare bore into Mika's eyes, flooding its entire his entire body with a suffocating anxiety. Petrified, he couldn't react in time as Gabrielle quickly grabbed his jacket and thrust him into the darkness. Hey! The hole was barely big enough for Mika to fit in. But as he tried to pull himself out of it, he was pushed back down by Ada's body. Just like Mika, Gabriel, Gabrielle had pushed her in. Dad, no! This is so sad. Oh my god. You're right, Mika. I'm a failure. I'm someone who isn't strong enough to protect the people I love. Ada is protecting you guys. You're strong enough, Gabrielle. Oh my god, I'm fucking gonna cry. Oh my god. Gabrielle! Stop! Stop! I'm sorry that I wasn't able to convince you that I had no ill intentions. <laughs> I'm sorry that I couldn't protect your mother. You can curse me for all eternity. Just please, let me do this. I hate all of this. Oh my god. I mean, ugh. No! Despite all that, I love you too. I'm crying. And <laughs> you're watching this, I'm crying, okay? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> ah, I do love a parental figure who's gonna sacrifice their life for their children. Their child and their children. Ah. Okay, it's fine. Mm. Dad, open the door! I'm so sorry, Ada. With one hand, Mika firmly covered her mouth while he wrapped his free arm around her upper body. She desperately tried to free herself from his tight grip, but she didn't stand a chance. 
No matter how reluctant he was to face this situation, he knew that resistance was futile. Why? Why am I so weak? <sighs> Silence. With the muffled sound of Ga Gabrielle's lifeless body collapsing over the trapdoor dam, the gunshots had ceased. Mika's body tensed up. It felt as though he had completely lost control, as if he was on autopilot. This was simply a bad dream. Yes, it had to be. This was just a nightmare. He'd be woken up by Ada wanting him to go play or something, surely. She would no doubt laugh at him, and if he, at him if she told her this. She would. Her tears rolled down the hand that covered her mouth with all its desperate might. But now her body had given up any kind of resistance. She simply leaned against him, silently accepting her fate. What about him? No, that couldn't be it. He would never accept such a fate. They have to pay. They will pay. I will kill every last one of them. Time marched on. A new day had dawned and the sun had once again bathed the world in its radiance. A number of wagons came to a halt at the entrance to the colony. A tall, middle-aged woman stepped out of the for for foremost car, her body bearing the scars of war. We were too late. <sighs> Taking a puff of her cigarette, she took in the tragic beauty of the battlefield. Lifeless bodies were scattered across the yard, and it was abundantly clear who had emerged victorious from this battle. Okay, so this is Atara. I'll take a look around, madam. There may be survivors. Okay, Isaac. All right. Despite her thoughts convincing her otherwise, she didn't want to deprive the naive boy of his hope. At the same time, however, she wanted this to be a stark demonstration of the cruelty this world can bear. It was all blur blurred, good and evil, wrong and right, righteous and criminal. In the end, they were two sides of the same coin. The only thing that gave them any meaning was this perspective of the hand that held it. That's a good thing, remember? Also, the thing that what Mika was saying, I was like, yeah, like, obviously, I understand why you would want to do, like, commit to those types of actions, given the things that have happened to you, to your parents, everything. But where does the cycle end? Does it ever end? I like, I like, I like these, these lines. These are good. I think that really paints like a very general theme about what's happening here. And in these types of stories where it's like, when does it end? I don't know. Is it, like, you can only end it if you stop taking action. And even then, like, that's hard, I think, to ask for or to do. Because then... Depending on who you are, I think, but also it's like, I don't know if you'd feel restless or if you'd always think about like taking revenge or taking some course of action or not. But, you know, here I am thinking about it. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, but I actually was crying for the last scene, so <laughs> I'm gonna wipe my tears away. Decisions are made under the misguided banner of ideals, revenge and power. And every time, human lives are caught amongst them. <sighs> it's a never-ending, vicious circle. We're on the same page about this. Great. At the end of the day, they're all equally victims and perpetrators. She didn't find much use pondering on what-if scenarios. It didn't matter. The damage was done and it was irreversible. They were too late. The colony and all of its inhabitants were executed in an act of revenge. Revenge for a crime a single woman was responsible for. What a waste. I really want to know more about Atara. Okay. She caught her gaze lingering on the body of a man. Compa contrary to the others, this one did not belong to one of the residents, but to the military. Mm. His eyes lay wide open, any remnants of a soul were long gone. What an agonizing death he must have had. Though hours had passed, she could still feel an aura of indescribable rage and a burning desire for revenge on this corpse. Madam! Who was it? 
Was it Nahum? Or was it, um... I forget his name. The Mr. Mans with the cloak, black cloak. With the high collar. And the one that, like, psh, psh, Mari, you know? Okay, Isaac found something. Aka people. The boy's shouts bellowed out of the large factory warehouse right next to her. Crouching next to an open trap door in the center of the hall, he made repeating pointed motions downward. There are two right here! They're both still alive but unconscious. Aww, how did you find them? <laughs> Behind him was the lifeless body of another man. She had known him through Mari, if, even if only in passing. What was his name again? Ah, uh, I see. So that's what happened. Did you sh did you shoot Nam or something? Gabrielle shoot Nahum. Maybe. She cast her vacant stare up at the sky. The day before, it was enshrouded in a sea of white clouds, but now it was immersed in a pearly, radiant blue. At last, the icy bite of winter had released its iron-clad grip, heralding a fresh start. Oh, what a way to end it! It's like, wow, winter's gone now. Woo woo woo, clap clap clap. I don't want to like hurt people's ears, so clap clap clap. Woo! This is great. Oh my gosh! Honestly, I'm really invested in this world slash this universe and the characters. It's like really fun. Um, I will say that I'm really looking forward to even more like universe, more world, more story. Um, and if you are also um, also wanting more of that, I highly encourage you to check out, um, I think it's called, because it's, it's Under the False Sky. I don't know if I can say the the, 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 the the name name, but you should check out the the next visual novel installation of Under the False Sky, uh, which is under the Nano Reno 2024 game jam. Um, and I'll link it if I'm able to. Um, because you should. It's it's great. There's a lot of details, very fun. And like I love how like connected everything is, um, and how emotional this game makes me feel. Like I'm super invested. Uh huh. And by the looks of it, she's having a beautiful dream. Makes you better, Mr. Moore. Yes, you're right. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Ah, under the fall sky, blood covered snow. Um, okay, so like I was saying, you check out the other under the fall sky that's just about to be released because it is the end of. Uh, March here now, so in the new week, uh, aka in April, it will be released, I'm assuming. Um, and I will be playing it on the channel because I want to check it out um, and see how it all looks um, after being able to help develop um, the writing, uh, not, not even the writing, but like the proofreading, like, you know, getting help with proofreading and such. So I'm excited. I'm completely vested in this world, and I hope you are too. Um, that little end bit is nice, so I'm assuming that Mika will be a character, a main character, another, a main character for another time. You know, another visual novel in the future, if not soon, or rather than later. I'm not entirely sure, so that'll be very interesting. Um, and again, I really like this theme that we're focusing on, where it's like... Like, it's a never-ending vicious cycle of taking action or taking action in whatever motivation you may like have revenge dreams goals whatever and then consequences happen and then that's like motivates someone to like again take action and then the cycle continues with actions turning to consequences and turning into action to consequences and then who who's right who's wrong are we not all right or wrong and wrong um how morally gray are we all um, I really am interested in like knowing more about the the world. Um, it's nice that we got to see Atara and Isaac at the end. Um, I'm assuming Atara is some sort of leader, like higher up leader of the rebellion. Um, you know, um, so that'll be interesting to see eventually. And yeah, I don't know. I um, 
I really love this. This is really well done, and I'm glad I've been able to play it now and fully know more details. And now, I'm, again, as I keep saying, I'm invested. So, you know, let's uh, leave it there. I don't think extras in the gallery. Oh, yeah, could we? Uh, these children! They make me cry. Okay, whatever. Anyways, I'm going to leave it here because... Oh, the music's also fun. I really love the music. <laughs> sea of desperation. I might have to listen to these. Um, just like for funsies. Okay. Settings? No. Okay. Anyways, this is me um, signing off. But if you like the video, please like the video. I appreciate it. Also, if you'd like to subscribe um, to my channel and see more playthroughs of individual novels then please feel free to subscribe i'm completing some games um that i started in the past month soon ish um and hopefully starting some new ones um so if you want to see indie visual novel playthroughs and commentary please feel free to stick around but anyways thank you so much for watching i hope you have a lovely rest of your day and i will see you later Bye!